So guys, in this tutorial, we're going to give the player a gun and he's going to be causing some unnecessary disturbances in the society. And yeah, that's all we're going to do. We're going to cover the screen shakes in this video and I'll see you guys in the tutorial. So we're going to begin by going to the player and in the player, we're going to give it a gun. So I'm just going to go ahead and import my gun here really fast. As I said, all the assets will be the link in the description below. So now we have our gun. So we're just going to go to our player, hit Control A, and our gun is just going to be a normal sprite. So nothing too crazy, it's just going to be a normal sprite. So we're just going to name this gun. And our gun is here, over here in the assets. And S gun, I'm going to drag it over, and here it is. So as you can see, it's at the middle of um, our body here, so we're just going to shift it down a bit. And if you notice, if I try to rotate this, you can see that it's not rotating the way we want to rotate. Um, what we have to, what we can do is go over to offset. I'm going to offset the X position so that it looks like the player is actually holding it there. So I got a 2 point, I'm sorry, 4.25, I think, which is good. So yeah, you can just go ahead and copy my exact same values or you can do it to your own preference sake, for preferences sake, sorry. So I think I'm good with this. Hit Control S, and another thing I want to add to the gun is a muzzle. So I'm just going to use a position to the node, and here it is. I'm going to just W Shift and move it over here to the right. So this is our position to the node. It's basically the same thing as the node to the, but I don't know why Godot just made it different. Okay, I think because of this gizmo extent or something like that. So yeah. Our gun is going to have a script, um, which is going to be here. And in our gun, we want to start making some variables. First of all, we want to make a variable called can fire. Sorry, by default, it's going to be true because at the start of the game, we want to be able to fire. So now, the next thing we want to do is we want to say set as top level. So what this function is going to do is, is basically um, going to ignore all the the transform properties of his parents normally a gun is meant to follow the parent but sorry a child node is meant to follow the parent node but once this function is in here it will override that and it won't follow the parent node anymore the reason for this is because i want to have some kind of lagging effects there with the gun so that it will actually look like we're carrying the gun not like the gun is following us if you know what i mean next thing i want to use is the physics process function and inside this, we're going to, this is where we're going to do um, the lagging code, okay? So what these lines of code are going to do is, I'm just going to expand this up here. So what these lines of code is going to do is, it's going to get our position, the X. Okay, so our X position is going to slowly become our global, our parent's position um, with a scale of 0 0.5. So it's going to like create a lagging effect there. So it's going to... It's going to slowly follow the player, but in a fast way somehow. So this is the same thing with position the Y. And if you notice, I'm giving it directly to position the Y, which is wrong. So I'm going to say plus 10 because from the main position of our player to the gun will be about 10 pixels there. You can see it at the left. I hope it will show in the video. So yeah, so we have to actually add a 10 there so that it won't go directly to the middle of the player. It will also keep this offset or left there. So the next thing is that we want to get the global mouse position. So we just make a variable mouse pose and smash that function in, which is going to give us wherever the mouse is look is. Next thing is we want to use the lookout function. So this lookout function is one very simple function that Godot made us use, um, which is going to look at whatever vector t you put there. So in this case, we just put mouse position. Now we are done with the looking at the gun, looking at the mouse. Now we actually want to start firing the gun. So we have looked at the mouse, we have done everything and we want to fire at something. Okay, so first off, I want to go to project, project settings, simple map, and I just want to get an action here. So the action I'm going to use is fire. Okay, so I'm just going to click add. And over here, you're going to see it. I want to add an event, which is the mouse button event which is the left mouse button. So this is the button that we're going to use to shoot um, our gun. So we can say if input dot is underscore action pressed fire. We're going to pass for now. And that's just because we don't have a bullet to actually fire. So 
we're going to create a new scene which is going to be the bullet i'm going to go ahead and import my bullet sprite so i got my bullet sprite here we're going to use a node which is an area to and i'm just going to fix up the node tree here really quick. so i'm done with fixing up the tree here and over here the sprite is as you can see it's two animations so we'll go over to animations and frames it's going to be one sorry um h frames is going to be two and frame is going to be one for now so we have this which is really cool and we're done with our collision shape just fix it to the size of the sprites there it's going to take it at the top and we're going to save this at bullet.tsn in objects so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a script to this bullet so now what we're going to do is we, first thing is we don't want um so a situation whereby our bullets are flying and let's say they leave the scene and keep going and stuff like that so we're going to ask a node called a visibility notifier 2d which is going to actually tell us if the bullet has left the screen or not so as you can see here it has a signal screen enters screen exited we're just going to connect screen exited and when we exit the screen we want to delete ourselves okay so when the bullet exits the screen it's good to go okay we're done with this now is um is the bullet's code now we're going to say export okay we're going to use the export var here var speed and i'm going to give it something like a 200 okay oh uh, i think a 200 is too small i think like 1500 now also we're going to set it as top level so and if we don't set it as top level the thing is if we shoot a bullet and we turn the gun the bullet that has already been shot will also turn which is going to be a disaster and that's what we don't want next thing we're going to do is a function which is the physics process form and we're going to put in this lines of code so now we have this yield statement okay so what this is going to do is immediately after the bullet has been shot from the gun it's going to um start the timer and the sprite of frame will be equal to one and it's going to set the physics process to false so this in plain english means um when we fire the bullets okay this sprite actually is meant to be at frame zero so when we fire the object um this sprite is going to show you once and it's going to show the main bullet sprite so it's just going to be like a hit flash there or something like that next thing is a for is a process for and this is where we're going to be moving the bullet so we just say should be plus equal this so over here we have a vector 2 the right time speed um sorry this is meant to be and yeah so a vector 2 the right is basically a vector 2 0 sorry 1 and 0 so as i said before in my previous tutorials i told you 1 is for the right okay so moving in the right direction is 1 so um, a vector to the right is just basically saying the same thing like this, which is a one for the right coordinates and stuff. So we're going to multiply that by the speed, which is going to give us a 1,500 to the right. Then we're going to attach this function, the rotated rotation delta. So in plain English, again, what this is going to do is, it's going to fire the bullet at whatever direction it's facing straight, okay? Um, if it's facing up, it's going to fire it up. If it's facing this way, it's going to fire it that way. Um, and it's going to just go straight, okay? That's what this function helps. Please note that if this function, the rotated rotation, is not here, then the bullet will always fly to the right-hand side. So even if we're pointing the gun diagonally, the bullet will also fly to the right-hand side, which is going to be a mess. So over at the gun, it's time to actually instance our bullets. So we're going to make variables for that. As you can see, the variable we made is a bullet variable, which is going to contain that preloaded scene. What this is doing is, in plain English, means um, it's going to get the bullet ready for instancing, so we can instance it anytime. So, yeah. so we have another variable. What this line of code is doing, as you can see here, is just instancing the bullet. Next line is we're going to set the bullet rotation. As you can see, set the bullet rotation. Next thing is to set the bullet so as you can see we're using global position and the reason why we're not just using direct position is because we actually want to get wherever that um wherever the gun is and yeah that's all uh, wherever this position is and that's where we want to shoot from if we just use position it's just going to 
we're gonna have a very funny result okay we're going to add the child to the scene so we just say get underscore parents dot add child bullet in. i think we should be good for now and yeah but we actually didn't use this can fire variable but we're going to use it because if we don't use it it's going to give us a funny effect which means the bullet doesn't have any firing delay which is very funny so we're going to set up that can fire so over here when we just release the bullets we we'll just say can fire will be equal to false and we're going to use, which says get tree dot create timer and the timer is 0.2 because that's the delay we're actually going to have before firing another bullet and after this we we'll just say can fire equals to true can fire so over here when we fire the bullets when we want to fire the bullets we say and can fire so if we cannot fire we're not going to fire the bullet um so if you run this now you're going to see that it's going to have that delay but i don't want to waste time so i'm not going to run it and if we go back to our bullets we want to connect some signals from this area so we say on body entered the body enter signal so anywhere we enter a body we want to delete ourselves actually so anything that it looks like a body once we just enter it we're gonna delete ourselves i think this should be good uh, oh and hooray it works everything works we delete ourselves when we enter a body and everything is good to go so now one of the last things i want to do is the screen shake effect so whenever we shoot the gun, we actually want the screen to somehow shake and stuff. So here we're going to add a camera for that camera 2D. And that's for the player, take note. And next thing we're going to add is just a normal node. So this is actually going to be the screen shaker. So I can just name it screen underscore. Yeah. And there's one other rename I wanted to do. Um, okay, yeah. Which is the position 2D. I want to rename this to muzzle because i don't know i just like renaming my stuff so that we can keep everything organized so once you rename it don't forget to go over to the gun and change it here to muzzle the global position so yeah that should be good so for the screen shaker we're going to have a script and we're just going to use a built-in script because this script is not going to be used in so many um parts of this tutorial or this game so we're just going to take built-in scripts here and we're going to hit create. In this way, it will not be added to the rest directory. It will not be added as a file. It will just be embedded in the scene. So over here, we want to add. So now I want to go through over everything. Don't panic. Everything is just going to, it's just easy and needs some explanation. <laughs> so here on the ready variable, we get our parents. So we're going to get the camera okay on the ready this is just basically saying this but this is just a shorter way of typing it out and over here we have a variable call time so whenever we call, um we, we have the four values in here which is 0 0.8 for the duration so like the shake is going to happen for 0 0.8 seconds and for the magnitude is it so that's like the um, how strong you want the shake to be so while time is less than duration, that means like while we are not done, we want time to be equal, plus equals to get process time. And time is going to be equal to the minimum of time and duration. And the offset, um, we're going to make a variable called offset. So offset of x is equal to a random range between that magnitude. So it's going to be a minus 8 or an 8. And the offset of y is the same thing. And camera the offset we're going to set offsets to its offset so the why we're doing that is um the camera actually has an offset um property here in this inspector panel so if we shift this a little bit to the right you're going to notice that the camera is going to somehow shift to the right so in code this is going to happen really fast so it's going to shift in random directions sorry in random um amounts um in a very short period of time which is just going to like create that shaking effect or something like that so it's going to move in the x direction and the y direction those are what these are for and if you don't know what this get process delta time means it's basically getting one over 60 for a laptop or for a device that is running um 
at 60 frames per second or for a game that's running at 60 frames per second um the process the other time is always going to be one over 60 that's if there is no lag or anything so this function is going to get like one over 60 i think that would be about 0 0.0167 or something like that and over here we're going to just check if the time has reached the duration so if the time has not reached the duration um we have to continue all this so we said after we set the camera offset we want to yield and get the idle frame what this is doing is it's going to wait for a signal which is the idle frame signal so the idle frame signal is emitted whenever the process is done like um, the process function is done and wants to start again so when the process function is done and wants to start again it's going to emit the signal which just allow us to continue from here so time will be equal to zero if we're done with everything and camera the offsets will become zero again just to reset the camera um, wherever it started from and stuff like that. So from here we have our camera and we have to click on current um, in order for it to work. As you can see, you have some kind of outline there around here. So we want to have a limit. Our limit is left is zero. So as you can see, the, the camera is actually off the limits. Um, this is our Godot game. And the camera was just off the limits right now. Like I can just see it's going to show all this part that we don't want meanwhile this is the viewport i hope you can see this through the video okay um the color of my background is the one that is causing all this so we're going to set it to zero and we're going to set the top also to zero and we're going to set the bottom to 600 because that's the size of our window if you go over to projects project settings general and over to window you're going to see that the height is 600 so the bottom is going to be 600 going to enable smoothing and smoothing yeah so all this um just simple basic stuff if you want to read them up you can just um highlight them you can just hover over them like this you're going to see the property name and you click shift f1 and just go search limit underscore smooth and here it is you can go read it up in the Godot documentation so yeah that should be all for the camera and for the shaker um the player here is going to have just one already variable already um var and it's just going to be the screen shaker so we just say screen underscore shaker so it's going to be equal to that node so that we can actually access it from the gun so from the gun anytime we shoot the bullet we want the screen to so we say get underscore parent dot screen shaker dot shake um, notice the underscore there and in this parenthesis we have two arguments to pass in it's not mandatory you pass them in but in order for them not to use the default values um, stated here you got to pass it in we're just going to pass in a 0 0.2 and a 2 and also one little flare i want to add is if you notice when we were firing the gun it was just going in one straight line which was not cool so what we want to do is we just want to say plus random range um and i think we should have a zero sorry 0 0.1 to a 0 0.1 actually it's meant to be minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 so it's just going to add some randomity there to how we're firing the bullet and how the bullet is moving so this tutorial actually feels long because it actually is um we're gonna hit play and we're just gonna see how we're gonna work with this as you can see the screen is shaking really nicely everything works crazily so this is really cool i like this if you like this too and you're not subscribed yet consider subscribing sorry for not recording this before now <laughs> but i have launched my patreon page so you can go over there and support me um for making these videos because it actually takes my time a lot but anyways i'm still going to continue making the videos the patreon page is just what you can use to support me and making better content and stuff like that okay so see you guys next time thanks for watching in the next video we are going to work on the tile maps and make everywhere look nicer and see you guys next time smash subscribe again and goodbye